The Mountain and I A short story from the science fiction short story collection entitled Astride Twin Seas by E.S. Wynn We sit together, the mountain and I But only the mountain remains the same Four times I lost her in a landslide. Four times I carried her broken body back to the colony, trudged bloodshod through an eternity of snow and ice just to deliver her mangled remains to a machine that would take her into its spider-like embrace, rebuild her with thin sinews of nano-silk and spun muscle protein. She remembered every death, remembered each so keenly, and with every descent into sudden darkness, she grew a little more distant from me. I rest my head at the base of the mountain. Only when I slumber does the mountain move. I don't love you. She looked at me with sad eyes as the words winged slowly from her mouth. I could feel the depth in those words, solid, tangible as packed ice and frozen stone. I tried. Even from the beginning I tried. I wanted to. I just never felt it with you. She looked away, and as I pulled in one long, shaky breath, I caught the scent of machines and dust in the air. Human progress. The tilling of the alien earth around us. I never loved you, she said, and I'm tired of lying to you. A stone falls from the peak of the mountain. I am the only soul to hear its final song. When the fifth landslide takes her, I consider walking on. I stand in the snow. I stare at the fur waving at the edges of my gloves. I think of a time when I sat with her at the base of the mountain, listening to the thunder and the fire of a caldera in the distance. I think of a moment when we laughed in the rain. I think of a moment when she ran to me, terrified, huddled into my embrace. I think of a moment when I carried her into the cascade of a waterfall, bathed the dust of the day from her shining skin. I think of all the bonfires we tended while someone strummed a steel guitar, sang old hymns of blues and soul. Beautiful couple, someone once said, perfectly matched. I love you, I said so many times. You will always be safe in my arms. And so I turn, and I begin to dig. I begin to dig, and I begin to gather her into my arms again. I stand, and behind me stands the mountain. Together we diminish as I walk toward the night. Please don't hate me. She stared at me from across the room with tears in her eyes. All around her, the floor was a forest of fattened backpacks and weathered chrome cases. Fear and resolve fought across her features. I could never hate you, I whispered. I can only want you. I can only love you. Will you move on, she asked, lip trembling. Then, I want you to move on. Don't wait for me. Words caught in my throat. I didn't want to move on, but I recognized the shape of her words. She'd made up her mind, and I knew I could no more change her heart than move a mountain with my touch, my words. In twos and threes, the backpacks and the cases disappeared until there were no more, until it was only she standing in the doorway, watching me. Her hair fell about her shoulders like a cloak of shadows, and then she herself became blended with the night, a specter of blue eyes, wet with tears. I turned away in the silence. I never heard her whispered goodbye. I sit with my memories of the mountain until only the memories remain.